Hey everyone, in this video I want to talk about the new Azure benefits for Windows Server instances that are covered by Software Assurance, all powered by Azure Arc. Now I've done a separate video before on the Arc capabilities when you Arc enable your servers, both Windows and Linux. But what we're really talking about is when we do that, if I think about what well, we have Azure, and obviously typically when we think about Azure, we're hosting many different types of service in Azure, natively compute, data, AI, all those different fantastic things. But a key point is we have this Azure Resource Manager. That's the control plane for Azure. It's how we talk to it through the portal, PowerShell, CLI, REST, whatever that might be. And it exposes a number of core capabilities. So for example, I can think about, will I get a basic inventory of just the, the resource object? You get things like, hey, I can do tagging, those key value pairs. I get certain Azure policy capabilities that could be just baseline configurations, I can track compliance. There's various extensions for those resources. And if I think about, well, I have a resource outside of Azure. So I've got my server. And what we can do is we can leverage Arc to now extend that Azure control plane to our machine. So what we install is the connected machine agent. Think of it as the Azure Arc agent. That establishes that connectivity to that control plane, which so is just TCP, as you would expect, 443. So just doing the outbound. And then it lights up a whole set of those capabilities. And this is fantastic. So suddenly now it shows as this hybrid compute object in Azure. I can apply the tagging. I can see those basic attributes. I can do certain policy extensions, like the run command is really cool. But there's also a bunch of other things. So now what I can do is I can take a number of those Azure services and I can apply them to any machine that has that Azure Arc agent on it and is now connected to that control plane. And again, this could be on premises, it could be in other clouds. So we might think about those features. And for example, we have update management. So you have update manager. So that's obviously when I think about, hey, I wanna do patching within my environment. It has rich change tracking and a more advanced inventory capabilities. So obviously that's where I think about the software, the services, the files, um, registry information. And I'm really focusing more as we talk about this on our Windows machines. Now these features work for Linux as well, but when I think about the software assurance where we're gonna get to, it's, it's obviously for our Windows boxes. But I have things like machine config. So while I get basic policy for the resource object in Azure, this is now doing what we think of as guest configuration. So it's doing things within the guest OS, the operating system configurations, the application configurations, the environment settings. And these are all paid for features. So if we actually jump over to the portal for a second, I'm just gonna look at one of them, but for like Azure Update Manager, well, it's free, if it's an Azure resource, because obviously Microsoft are getting money from hosting and they're billing you for that resource. But when it's Arc enabled, well, there's obviously costs associated with running these services and the development, etc. So you pay $5 per server per month. And most of the features we're gonna talk about have various per dollars per month capabilities, the more advanced change in inventory, the machine config, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm paying for those if I wanna bring that value to these machines. Now, what might be interesting when you look at just those three features, when you think of the legacy software, well, those three, a lot of the servers, that's where you may have used System Center Configuration Manager. So if I think about patching, the change management, the inventory, the applying policy and configuration, well, SCCM does a lot of those things. So if you're looking to move away from SCCM, hey, I arc enable my machines and I can use these Azure services. But then obviously you're paying for that. And there's a whole bunch more 
Azure capabilities that you can leverage, which we'll go into that. But as we talked about, well, right now I'm paying for those things. So what is the new capability? So this is all about, as we talk about, this is where they are a Windows machine. So it's Windows Server. And what you have is they are covered by Software Assurance. So you have SA for those particular instances. Now, if you know you do Software Assurance, you've got X number of cores of standard and X number of cores of data center. SPLA is not included in this. But if I do have those Windows servers covered by Software Assurance, again, on premises, in other clouds or whatever else, well now, remember this machine, because I've ARC enabled it, well, it has an object in Azure. So we have a representation of that hybrid resource. And what I can now do is I can actually go ahead and say, hey, I want to activate my benefits. There's a little box. I'm gonna say, yes, I want my benefits. And suddenly what that's gonna do for you is these and a bunch of other capabilities will now just be included. You won't pay extra for them. And this is really nice. If you think about, hey, I currently have a whole bunch of Windows Server, and maybe I've already ARC enabled it for things like ESU and just for that hybrid management, but I'm suddenly now gonna be able to leverage a huge amount of Azure functionality for no cost. It's just covered by my software assurance. So the server admins now have a whole bunch of new tools and it's really good for them as well because, hey, you can start to get new cloud skills and leverage that. And of course, Arc is a super low barrier. This connected machine agent is very, very lightweight and it's super easy. So let's actually jump and have a look actually with this. So if I jump over for a second and let's go and actually see this in action. So here I'm looking at my Windows Server Azure benefits and licenses under Arc. So I've gone to Azure Arc, and then what we can see here is under our licenses, we're specifically looking at Windows Server Azure benefits and licenses. Now remember the machine has to be connected via Azure Arc. This could be on-prem, it could be in another cloud. But now I see it as a hybrid compute resource under the Azure Resource Manager. And now what I want to do is activate its benefits. So we can see there is this benefits column right here. And we can see some are activated, some are not. So I'm simply going to go and select one of the machines. Or I could do multiple machines if I wanted to. But I'm just going to select one machine. And then up here, I have this option of activate benefits. And notice you can also remove benefits right next to it. So we activate benefits and there we go. It's showing us, I just have to check this checkbox and I'm basically attesting to the fact that yes, I have this machine and enough licenses covered by Software Assurance and they are active. So I'm allowed to get these, these benefits and I would check the box and I would hit activate. Now, this is a trust-based system. It is not, at this time, going and validating exactly how many you have. But obviously, Microsoft have auditing on their side to how many you are attesting to and how many as an organization you actually own. So you want to be doing this um, in a trustworthy manner. Don't just go and turn this on for everything you have. But now, for all of these various features, and it's showing you the detail of this, all of these features hey, I now just get as part of my software assurance benefit and I don't have to pay for those features in Azure. And we can just cancel that out. So as you can see, that was a super low barrier to actually start using that. And I talked about what well, is actually way more features than just the three I drew on the board and you saw those. But if we actually go and look at the documentation for a second, let's just jump back over it goes into those details. Now I've covered these th first three, Azure Update Management, Azure Change Tracking Inventory, Azure Machine Configuration. Now notice, these are for Windows Server 2012 and above. The rest of the capabilities, 
today, and this you never know, could change in the future, offer Windows Server 2025 only. So all those other features, so I think about the Windows Admin Center in Azure for Arc. So that gives you a huge amount of management capability for those various services. That's only for Server 2025. The remote support. So the remote support gives me the ability for just-in-time access via Arc enabled for things like Microsoft support. The network HUD is a whole set of diagnostics and health checks I can do on my network. Obviously, best practices, analyzer to generate issues and remediation guidance. And ASR to me is crazy because that's a way more expensive license. Uh, but it's obviously for 2025 only. But you do suddenly get all of these other capabilities. So I can think about, well, yeah, you also get Windows Admin Center. You also get that remote support just in time. You get the network capabilities for troubleshooting. You get the best practice analyzer. And again, Azure Site Recovery. Now that's only to Azure. I can't use that for on-prem to on-prem or something else. It doesn't include the cost of the storage because obviously it's replicating and it doesn't include the cost of the actual the logs and the traffic you're generating. It doesn't include the cost of the compute if you go and start the thing. But the actual ASI license, Hey, is now included. But again, for these, it's only 2025 at time of recording. You never know. Sometimes they change these things. Check the docs to see if that does change. But that's where it is right now. But the key point really is all about the fact that, hey, if I have my Windows servers covered by software assurance, and most organizations do have that, I can now go and activate those benefits. So I arc enable it, which you may have done already. I activate my benefits and now I can start using those first three for 2012 or above. And they're huge. If you think again, today maybe I'm using Config Manager and I wanna move away from that, I can now use the Azure hosted version of all of that patching and inventory and change tracking and uh, applying policy. And for 2025, you get a bunch of other capabilities as well, including that ability to replicate to Azure. Now I showed it in the portal. It's also lit up via, for example, PowerShell. So I could go and bulk enable this for PowerShell. And it's really just a, a great set of benefits that if you've already got the software assurance, go and leverage those things to start taking advantage of more capabilities that you don't have to pay for. I think it's really about closing the gap between the stuff I get for free in Azure, if it's an Azure resource, and now, hey, even if it's not in Azure, but I've Arc enabled it, if I've got some kind of license coverage, for example, software assurance for Windows Server, hey, I can still get a whole bunch of great additional capabilities, um, even though it's not actually running in Azure. So that was it. I, I hope that was useful, bring some awareness. Uh, definitely another, a uh, huge value to, to leveraging ARC. Uh, until next video, take care.